Hello, everybody. Welcome to my video today. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're watching this when the video is first released. A couple days ago, before Thanksgiving, I posted on my Facebook page that I was taking a little break from all of the things until December 1st. I have a really special project coming up in December that I can't wait to share with you guys. And I wanted to focus on that. And quite honestly, I just needed a minute. I've been struggling quite a bit uh, emotionally and mentally, and I just needed to be able to take uh, some time when my kids were off school to um, just sort of recover and, and get ready for the holidays. So that's what I'm doing. But I had this video and I wanted to share it with you uh, about two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. I did a little bit of a craft room cleanup and um, I just, I like to do this every couple months. I just go through, make sure all my stuff is put where it needs to go. I know as crafters, things get messy and we pull things out and sometimes we don't have time to put all the things back. And so I like to do that and straighten things up. And then I am preparing for a new catalog. So as a full-time demonstrator, um, I am a, I have product coming in and out of my craft room at kind of odd times. So like right now I have a lot of spring stuff coming in with a new catalog and I'm preparing for that. So I wanted to bring you along. I enjoy doing this and just sharing with you when something's working or not working and cleaning things up and straightening things up and putting stuff um, away. So I'm gonna dive right in and start sharing with you this cleanup. And um, I hope you enjoy coming along for the journey. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. And I will be back with new content on December 1st. Hey, uh, I'm just going to jump right in. So this, um, if you've been around for a while and following my craft room stuff, you know, I, I recently went through all of this. I updated a lot of my pattern paper. I did a big order of pattern paper. Um, and kind of organized it a little bit, I don't know, better. So there's not a lot to go on right here. I just, I'm going to clean the shelves. I am getting rid of a few things. I just, there were a few things in these containers that I had at the very bottom. And I'm just going to shift some stuff up. I also am trying to think of a better way to store my 12 by 12 colored cardstock. I That works fine. I just have it sitting in here and I have some foam board stuck in here as dividers. But it gets pushed back like, I don't know. And then as I go through it and I use it, I don't know, it starts to lean. I, I don't know. I just, it's not... I really would like something better, but I don't want to spend a bunch of money. That's the thing. So it, this is like my own problem, right? <laughs> so I'm going to shift some things down. I'm going to think about that 12 by 12 cardstock and I'm going to get, I'm going to pull some stuff to donate to the school and just shift some things up and down. Like my six by six paper, I only ever access when I'm doing my editorial pages, which is not all of the time. So I think my six by six paper can go down farther. And then some of the stuff that I'm accessing more can go um, up. And so the other thing is, is like this 12 by 12 cardstock that is Stampin' Up. Stampin' Up used to do these big packs of pattern paper in 12 by 12 and they came in like the family colors like there was a brights collection and then maybe they were like dots and stripes and then they had all of the colors that's what this is and then this is also like retired stampin up paper that like I have that maybe I really like or have a project in mind for I think I'm also going to put that lower and put some of my other collections of paper up because this is like filler paper. It's not, I'm not pulling out this 12 by 12 paper for an entire project. This is like, I need a red piece of pattern paper that's just polka dots. I know I can safely go to all of that and I'll have cardstock that will match it. Um, it's not stuff that I'm pulling for projects. And there's more of my stuff down here that's like Allie Edwards paper, or paper collections that I'm actually pulling to make pages with. 
So I think I'm going to shift that. I also, this is all my specialty paper and I need to go through this and organize it better. I have it organized by like type, like all my gold stuff is together. So gold vellum, gold glimmer paper, gold foil, it's all together. Um, but I think I need to break this up into two uh, containers because this one is totally full and I have some sitting here that like needs to get organized in here, but it doesn't fit. And so um, I need to do that. So I am also cleaning the shelves off and then I'm also going to, this doesn't need a lot of work, but I need to go through this container. It's my like monthly catch-all container. And then these are pretty packaging and that will stay the same. I also, um, the other day I was given a huge stack of Project Life plastics. So I mean... It was a ton of stuff. It was um, a bunch of design A, a bunch of design D. And then there was a bunch of like random pages too. Like the um, 8 by 11. I don't know. It was just a ton of stuff that somebody was getting rid of and knew that I did this. And so they gave it to me. And so I reorganized this and got that cleaned up. I also over on my desk is a whole stack of Stampin' Up!, or we are memory keeper plastics that I'm going to get rid of because I don't like them. They're bigger than my project life ones. I've talked about this before. I only use Becky Higgins project life page protectors, not because I think anything that they're better or anything. It's just that I've used them and they're all the same size. So I don't like page protectors in my albums to be bigger than the other ones, particularly the 12 by 12 regular ones. So I think I'm just going to get rid of all those Stampin' Up! ones because I don't use them. I'm not sure exactly where to get rid of them or or what I'm going to do with them. Um, but I think I'm just going to get rid of them. And then this looks really nice. And so I'm going to clean all of this up, clean the shelves, break this up, move everything up. I'll come back and share with you. And then the other thing I think I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to shift around some of this. When I'm sitting here to craft... I reach behind me for some things and I think I'm going to put them instead of things being directly behind me where it's really hard to um, like get to, I think I'm just going to shift some of this stuff around and then pull some stuff out to get rid of. So I think I'll do that in this video too. So I will check back in with you when um, I get back. The other thing that I already did is I cleaned up these here. So you can see like that is all cleaned out. There's nothing there. Um, I had somebody purchase some of those boxes from me. So I need to get those shipped out. I went through my dies, cleaned those up. I have a ton of stuff out of here because I'm crafting upstairs right now, um, trying to finish up designing for a class. So my big shot is not there right now. Um, but that's usually where my big shot goes. And so all of that's now cleaned up. And um, that looks good. So I'm going to do this shelf with the paper and then I'll check back in with you. Okay, a few things that I did and a couple tips for you. The first thing I did is down here are my Cricut mats. And I had an old Cropper Hopper 12 by 12 organizer thing. If you know what they are, then you know what they are. They're just like a magazine holder but they're plastic and it's, it used to be all the rage to put your paper in them. I had one of those, it was kind of broken. So I just stuck it between this and like, cause there was a little cubby there. I stuck it in there and I put all my Cricut mats in there. I have 12 by 12, six by, what is it? Like six by eight and then like six by 12. So they're all there and they're easier to access instead of being wedged in between things. That's perfect. Down here is my felt, my layouts that are ready to start working on, and then um, multiple brand new packs of different designer paper. I'll share about that more later. I shifted this down, so that worked out great. And then here's pattern paper. I shifted some of my pattern paper up. And then what I did, originally I wanted to split up, this is current Stampin' Up! paper. So it's the annual catalog and currently the holiday catalog. I originally wanted to split that up into two small 
containers and have one for the annual and then one for the mini, whichever mini is I'm working with, but it's just not going to work. So the thing about these containers, they are multi-purpose clear containers from the container store. They are super reasonable. I know I say container store and everybody is like, oh my God, that's so expensive. But I promise you, these are the most inexpensive item at the container store. I think the large one is like $5.99. So the small and the medium one are under $5. Um, I When I bought these to do this, I just bought a whole bunch of every size. So I bought a handful of large, a handful of medium, a handful of small. The thing is, is that with the Calyx units, the combination that works the best is either two small and one medium or two medium and one small. If you use the large, you end up with this gap and there's nothing that can fit there. Like a small one doesn't fit there. Um, so you lose a bunch of space. So I'm just working with what I have. So when I split these into two smaller ones, I didn't, I don't have a medium one. Like I only have several large ones left. So that's unfortunate. And I don't want to spend any money to buy more because then I'm going to have a bunch of large ones left. Now I do use these over here as well. Each one of my kids has one and that is the current stuff that needs to go in their albums. I have one up here that has layouts in it that I either haven't used or that need to go into albums. And then, um, I also had one up here for stuff that needed to go into our regular family album. I don't have an extra one now because I I moved it. So that's fine because um, they're used here. So it's fine. But if you're going to get these containers for these shelvings for paper, um, get the small and the medium. Skip the large. It also, it gets heavy. So that's the other thing is, is that every time I pull out my Stampin' Up! paper to get stuff to use... Um, what is happening is it's heavy, it's bulky. I put a dent in my desktop um, from setting it down in the corner, like sank into the desk because I set it down too hard. Um, so my best recommendation is to get um, to get the small and the medium. So the other thing I did is I grabbed um, one of my boxes. This is all the stuff I'm going to donate to the school. I have more to put in here. And then I have a box here that is all stamping up like they're brand new packs of paper. And I'm going to sell this box of paper. I have more to put in here. I'm going to sell it for like 50 bucks and just ship it to somebody who wants all this beautiful paper. Some of it is like uh, retired, retired, like, um, and then some of it is like, this is a brand new pack of the Harvest paper from the mini catalog, but it's retiring next month. We're past fall projects. And so I don't, I don't want to cut this up. It's a whole pack. So, um, and I won't use it again. So, and then there's like, this is a set of, um, it's brush stroke paper. So it's a specialty, but I never used it. So I thought I would throw that in there. So I'm going to throw all of my paper in there. I'm going to sell that box for like 25, 30, 40, $50. I don't know, just something to get out of my craft room. So I'm just going to tidy up this area and then this area will be done. None of this needs to be messed with. It all is organized. It all it works. All my page, other page protectors are in there. Um, all of that is fine. So um, I won't mess with any of that. I'll tidy this part up and then we'll get into the next spot. All right. All of this is done. It's straightened up, cleaned out. I went through my basket. There's some projects I need to film and get done for sure. Uh, the paper is figured out. I still do not know what to do about my 12 by 12. I just need to think about it for, I just need to think about it. I, I really want to try to figure out a not expensive. What I was thinking about doing, this is all current colors and then this is all retired. And so I'm thinking about um, maybe getting some of the medium and the small multi-purpose containers because I know I, I can use those. Um, I don't want to get something that is just specific for 12 by 12 that won't allow me like, like a insert or anything because if something changes out, I want to be able to change things out. So 
maybe my best bet would be to get uh, some medium and small containers of this. And then um, if I had a small one, I could even put a small one right here. Like I could do a, a medium, a medium, and a, another medium for this and then put the color family. So I, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think through that and just see what would be best for that. Um, I did, I have some Christmas paper that I need to put up stairs and then I need to put, um, there's some of the kids's, I think that's Andrew's pile of schoolwork, which needs to get filtered into his box. So I did straighten up this area here. I don't know if I shared in a video how I did this. I had purchased some containers that they said they were 10, they were 12. The description said they were 12 and a quarter by 13. And I got them for this spot right here. They were thin. And these are projects that I have going on currently that need to be worked on. And I had gotten those and I thought they would stack really nice there. I looked at the measurements. I measured this. I got the containers and they were not 12 by 12 at all. They were like 11 and a quarter by 12. They were not 13 um, at all. So be, I was mad and I, I returned them and requested a refund. I was so angry. I even left an angry review, which I never do. Um, but it made me so mad that the measurements were wrong. Not even the outside of the product was 13. Like, I don't know where they got 13 from. So I just took some of my medium flat rate boxes. I get these in bulk because I ship tons of stuff. And I cut the tops off and I stacked them here. Now, they're bowed, they're not perfect, and they're certainly not pretty, but for right now, for the current situation, I have my projects separated, and so I'm just going to leave that. It, it's like, I, I get it, it's not pretty at all, but it was free, it fits there, and it has my stuff organized. I just ordered two more albums, so what I've been doing recently is those two mint albums at the end are for next year. So my 2022 are right here. These will be 2023. And then what I've been doing the last few years, because I had a situation where I went to buy albums and they were out of stock for well into the new year. So what I do now is I already have, like when I bought my 2022 ones, I, um, like I bought two sets. I think it was in 2022 that I bought two sets. So I bought my 2022 set and then my 2023 set. They're not cheap. They're like $25 a piece. So it was like a $100 order, right? But now I know for sure I have my 2023 and then I will order in January my 2024. And if they're out of stock, I obviously have 12 months before like I'm going to be in a pickle with not having an album. So I will put those two, the 2024 down here because all of this will start to get shifted um, towards the end of next year. But I have big plans to do my kids' albums this next year and get them caught up. So I did all the spines of our albums this year and reorganized those and they look really good and things will start to shift. Um, down and that yellow album goes in my living room in the summertime. It's my week in the life album. So some of that kind of gets shifted here. So I cleaned all of that up. That looks great. I cleaned up the shelves. No worries there. Everything is fine here. So I'm getting ready to start moving on to here. And what I've realized, I pulled some stamps and I have um, more stamps up in the living room because I said earlier, I am crafting up there right now. I need a spot to put retired stuff, like all of my fall stamps, all of my celebration stamps from the last celebration, and all of my Halloween stamps can all be pulled off my stamp area here. I'm getting ready to, uh, by the time you see this, I will have already ordered from the new mini that's coming up in January. I'm a demonstrator. Um, and I was able to do a um, really very early order of the new catalog and see the new catalog. Um, 
And so I will be getting stuff that doesn't come out until January. And I usually put it down here, right? But right now all my holiday stuff is there. So I need to be able to like, I know I'm done with Halloween. I know I'm done with fall. I still have a bunch of Christmas stuff to do. So I want my Christmas stuff out, but I don't want any of the other stuff out. So I need a spot to put this. I used to just put it with my retired stuff, but Stampin' Up! has been bringing back product. And what has happened the last couple years is I've gotten rid of product, not realizing that it was going to be returning. And so I'm obviously not going to buy it again. Um, and so I've kind of been out of luck a couple times. So I need a new system to take what's retired or what I'm not using, but I'm not positive if it's going to retire and stick it somewhere because otherwise it's out of sight, out of mind, and then it gets sold or given away or something. So I need to figure that out. I went through my embellishments and ribbon and cleaned all of that up. That's the holiday catalog stuff. Um, and then, like I said, a huge chunk of my stamp sets and a huge chunk of my ink pads are upstairs. So there's not much to do here. I'm going to dust all of this. And then recently, I took down all of the circle things that were up here. If you remember from my old videos, I had my pens that are right there. Um, I had them over here. There's the light is glaring on that. Maybe I can turn it off. Yeah. And I just never really liked the way it looked. So I purchased this poster. It's the blue prints from a camera. And I left um, these that I made. I left them up there. I don't know that I love it yet. I feel like it would have looked really bad if I would have taken those Rosetta things down. It would have torn the wall up even more. So I had thought like, oh, I'll leave them there. And I moved my pens and stuff over there, but I still, I don't really love that. I might take those down, but I just, I put that up there. I got it up there and then I'm just going to leave it and live with it for a little bit. I've said before, this back here is my backsplash when I'm on Zoom meetings. And so I've wanted to clean it up and make it like, I don't need things like, totally white space everywhere but I also I don't know I like things to not be so cluttered and feel messy and I don't know I just keep feeling like with those things up there it just feels really messy I don't know so I'm living with it for right now and then currently I'm designing a class and I have my Cricut out with my Cricut cartridges it was a whole thing um I'll link a video and the cards so you can hear my rant with what happened. So I have that out. And then, um, so I'm going to clean up all of the, this stuff and kind of shift this down so that I can access it a little better when I'm crafting. And that will be it for all I'm doing today. This is going to stay out until I'm done with it. And then I cleaned up over here. I dusted all the shelves, cleaned up all of that. And then, like I said, I have those I need to ship. And then the last thing I did is I put up this um, these chalkboard board pieces. They're like, I think they're six by six and it just has my work stuff on it and like a time converter. And then I've been putting extra photos up there. So anytime that I have like an extra photo, I stick it up there. So my desk is pretty clean. I got to figure out what to do with those page protectors. And I have a couple things to file right there, but other than that, it's all cleaned up. I also, like I said, I want to get all the fall and Halloween stuff out of here. I'm going to be focusing on Christmas. And then probably by the middle of next month, I'll be, or maybe even the beginning of next month, I'll hopefully be done pretty much with Christmas designing. You'll still see Christmas videos all through Christmas. Um, but I'll start getting that out of here as I start ordering from the new catalog and I'll start focusing on Valentine's Day and that kind of stuff. So um, this is my December daily stuff. I have an organizer that's coming for all of that. So until I get that and my December daily album, all of that is stacked there. And then I have some Project Life stuff I'm designing. So I need that album out. But otherwise, I've cleaned up pretty well. Um, that stack of paper right there is stuff that I need to go through and either stick in the box to sell or cut down to 12 by 12 or just file it where it needs to go. So I'm going to do that and then, um, and then I'll wrap the video up. All right. It's been a few days 
And uh, I think I'm going to wrap this video up now. Um, so the last thing I was going to do, I was going to shift some of this stuff around so that it was more on this side. So when I'm sitting here creating or filming, I can access this stuff easier. What I didn't really think about is the fact that we cut a portion of that shelf out so that would fit there. So if I was to do it over again, I would do this right here instead of there because that is directly behind me when I'm crafting and it's very hard to access. I basically have to like get out of my chair, move the chair, then grab what I need. And it would just be a little bit more convenient if it was over one, but that's not really a possibility. The only other thing that I did on these shelves is I shifted my scrap, my scrap bin from where that blue bin is over. Um, so it's a little bit easier to access. I organized this a couple months ago and it's just by color and then by color family. So all the subtles are up here and then it goes to brights and then regals and then neutrals. And, um, I like that. I don't, I don't typically use my scraps a ton. I actually, I don't think to, but I'm trying to get better about it. In fact, this last weekend when I was designing a class, I just took my bin of scraps and set them out to be able to do all my die cutting. And that was really fantastic. So I think at the beginning of the year, I'm considering going through all of these and doing a little bit of purging and cleaning up. Honestly, there's not that much to clean up in these because when I did my big craft room, re when I reorganized everything and I put in this wall of like cubes, I went through every single thing in this room. And so... Everything in here is pretty much what I use or what like this is punches and punch boards. Like there's nothing that needs to be purged from there. Um, This is like cleaning supplies for like my stamps. It's like my Mod Podge spray and um, paper towels, press and seal um, wipes. Uh, there's a bottle of water in there. And then like, this is my planner washi, um, which is just washi tape, but I use it mostly for planning. I've already purged through that. So everything pretty much on this wall is, I would say like, okay, I think there's a couple bins, like I have Cricut cords, um, in one of them. And so I could probably pare those down. So maybe in January, I will do that when I get all the Christmas stuff out and I do that. I'll probably share that with you guys. But for now, this is going to work. Um, I've already like things have already started accumulating even after I've cleaned and shared and filmed, um, in the beginning of this video, this is all my December daily stuff. So I just got this organizer from scrapbook.com. Um, I altered mine a little bit so my 12 by 12 paper would fit in here. There's a divide. There's a divider. See how there's a divider here? Well, there is a divider like right here and I actually altered it so that my 12 by 12 paper would fit and I freaking love this. I'm going to use it for um, December daily and then I'm also going to use it for like week in the life and then I got my album and stuff so that's sitting here. And then I have my scrapbook class that is starting to fill up. And that's what those boxes are um, there. So, so something's already stacked in front of that cube that I cleaned out with all the paper. Um, but that's just how it goes. Like that, you know, when you're doing this as a business, there's just never a moment when things are not piled up in here as much as I would like them to not be piled up. The other thing that I have in here is... I have those page protectors that are not Becky Higgins. They're Stampin' Up! page protectors and We Are Memory Keepers. I have those in a box and then I have a box of that designer paper that I talked about earlier in the video that are packs of like pretty much brand new paper um, in that box to sell. And then I have a box to donate to the School of Stuff. And that stuff is just sitting there for right now until I figure out um, how I'm going to put it up for sale. And then I'm updating my 
computer and then this is pretty cleaned up. Um, I have blog posts and stuff to write today and videos to edit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end the video. You will probably see another video in December and then maybe January or February when that starts. Um, when I start in with all of that stuff. So thank you for joining me for this kind of craft room confessional cleanup kind of video. Uh, I always appreciate sharing with you guys. Uh, it motivates me to get things done and do things. <laughs> and then I hope it motivates you to um, do stuff in your own space as well. So thank you so much and I will catch you in my next video.